Have you ever wondered where we came from or rather when and how life itself emerged in this vast universe? This question is a universal enigma, one that has puzzled scientists, philosophers, and thinkers alike for centuries. The origins of life, its emergence, and evolution in the cosmos are topics of profound significance. They not only hold the key to understanding our past, but also shed light on our future and the potential existence of life beyond our home planet. The question is intriguing, complex, and deeply rooted in various scientific fields, from astrophysics and chemistry to biology and geology. The quest to unravel this mystery takes us on an exciting journey across time and space, traversing the birth of stars, the formation of planets, and the creation of essential building blocks of life. So, let's embark on a journey through time and space to understand how life could have appeared in the universe. Everything begins with the Big Bang, a cosmic explosion that marked the birth of our universe. This monumental event, which took place nearly 14 billion years ago, wasn't an explosion in the traditional sense. Instead, it was an instantaneous expansion of space and time from a singularity, a point of infinite density and gravity. In the blink of an eye, the universe expanded faster than the speed of light, growing from the size of a subatomic particle to a grapefruit. This period of rapid expansion known as cosmic inflation set the stage for the formation of everything we know today. The early universe was an incredibly hot and dense place filled with a soup of fundamental particles. As it expanded and cooled, these particles began to combine and form the first atomic nuclei in a process known as nucleosynthesis. This primarily produced hydrogen and helium, the simplest and most abundant elements in the universe. Yet the early universe was far from being a hospitable place for life as we know it. It was a turbulent, chaotic environment, devoid of the complex structures we see today. There were no stars, no galaxies, just a hot, dense plasma of fundamental particles. However, as the universe continued to expand and cool, gravity began to pull the matter together, forming the first stars and galaxies. These early stars ignited their nuclear furnaces, turning hydrogen and helium into heavier elements, the building blocks of planets and life. The birth of the universe set the stage for a cosmic drama of epic proportions. From the chaotic aftermath of the Big Bang, the first stars ignited, illuminating the cosmos and setting the stage for the formation of galaxies, stars, planets, and eventually, life. The Big Bang set the stage for the universe we know today, but it was just the beginning. From these humble beginnings, the universe embarked on a journey of cosmic evolution, transforming from a hot, dense plasma into a vast, complex cosmos, teeming with galaxies, stars, planets, and perhaps life beyond our own planet. Inside stars, a cosmic forge operates, creating the chemical elements necessary for life. This may seem like a line from a sci-fi novel, but it's the absolute truth. Stars, those twinkling points of light in the night sky, are the birthplaces of the very elements that make up you, me, and the world around us. Stars are not just celestial bodies that light up the night sky, they are nuclear reactors. They generate energy through a process called nuclear fusion where lighter elements combine under extreme temperatures and pressures to form heavier elements. This process begins with hydrogen, the simplest and most abundant element in the universe. Through fusion, stars convert hydrogen into helium, then helium into carbon, oxygen, and so on, all the way up to iron. Among these, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen hold a special place. Why? Because these are the primary elements that constitute life as we know it. Carbon forms the backbone of important molecules like DNA, proteins, and sugars. Oxygen, besides being crucial for respiration, also forms part of water, the universal solvent where all life processes occur. Nitrogen is a key component in amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. However, it's not just the creation of these elements that's important. When a star exhausts its nuclear fuel, it dies in a spectacular explosion known as a supernova. This violent event spreads the star's enriched guts across the cosmos, seeding space with the elements necessary for life. These elements eventually find their way into new stars, planets, and potentially, life forms. So, the cycle of stellar birth, death, and rebirth not only shapes the cosmos but also seeds it with the potential for life. It's as if stars have been designed to create and propagate life across the universe. 
So, stars are not just beautiful, they are the cradles of life's essential ingredients. It's a humbling realization, isn't it, that we are not just in the universe, but of the universe, made from the very stuff of stars. From the ashes of dead stars, new planetary systems emerge. This is a simple yet profound statement that captures the essence of our cosmic journey. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, recycles and reuses. Stars that have lived out their lifetimes explode in spectacular supernovas, scattering their enriched contents across the cosmos. These materials, heavy with elements like carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, then coalesce to form new stars and planetary systems. In this cosmic dance, the birthplaces of worlds are created. These are the nurseries where planets are born, the environments where the ingredients for life are mixed and matched in a myriad of ways. Picture a swirling nebula, a vast cloud of gas and dust. Gravity pulls this material together, causing it to spin and flatten into a disk. In the center, a new star ignites, while around it, dust particles begin to collide and stick together, forming planetesimals, the building blocks of planets. But not all planets are created equal. For a planet to support life as we know it, certain conditions must be met. First, it must orbit within its star's habitable zone, the region where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist, too close to the star, and any water would evaporate, too far away, and it would freeze. Secondly, the planet needs to have the right kind of atmosphere. This not only provides the air that potential life forms might breathe, but also helps regulate the planet's temperature and protect it from harmful solar radiation. Finally, the planet requires a certain level of geologic activity. This can help recycle nutrients, maintain a planet's magnetic field, and even contribute to the development of an atmosphere. In our own solar system, Earth is the only planet that meets all these criteria. But, with the universe being as vast as it is, who's to say there aren't other, distant worlds that do as well? Planets, then, become the stages where the drama of life might unfold. And we, as curious observers, continue to search for these stages, hoping to one day find a performance in progress. Not too hot, not too cold, but just right. The Goldilocks Conditions for Life this phrase has been used to describe the delicate balance of conditions necessary for life as we know it to exist. A crucial factor in this balance is the concept of the habitable zone, often referred to as the Goldilocks zone. The habitable zone is the region around a star where conditions could potentially allow for the presence of liquid water on a planet's surface. Why is this important? Because water is the elixir of life. Every living organism we know of needs water to survive. If a planet is too close to its star, it would be too hot and any water would evaporate. Conversely, if it's too far away, the water would freeze. But in the habitable zone, the temperature is just right for water to exist in its liquid state. But the habitable zone is only one piece of the puzzle. A planet could be in the perfect location, but without the right atmosphere, life would still struggle to thrive. An atmosphere provides protection from harmful solar radiation, helps regulate temperature, and, if it contains the right mix of gases, can provide the ingredients necessary for life to develop. Stable conditions are another crucial factor. Life, especially complex life, needs time to evolve. If conditions on a planet are constantly changing, it could be difficult for life to gain a foothold. This stability can be influenced by many factors, including the planet's orbit, its rotation, and the activity of its star. Finally, the chemical makeup of a planet is key. Life as we know it is based on carbon and for good reason. Carbon can form complex molecules that are stable at the temperatures and pressures found on Earth. If a planet lacks sufficient carbon or other necessary elements, the chemistry of life as we know it may not be possible. These just right conditions set the stage for the appearance of life. It's a delicate balance, a cosmic dance of many factors working together. And it's these conditions we seek as we look to the stars in our ongoing quest to answer one of humanity's oldest questions, are we alone in the universe? On Earth, life emerged in extreme conditions, providing clues to its origins. As we delve deeper into the cradle of life, we find ourselves journeying back to a time when Earth was a vastly different place. It was a time of intense geological activity, a time when the planet was in its infancy, teetering on the brink of the first sparks of life. Our best evidence points us to the existence of life on Earth as early as three and a half billion years ago. 
These early life forms, which we call prokaryotes, were simple, single-celled organisms. Yet, despite their simplicity, they were the pioneers of life, the first tenants of an otherwise barren world. But what's intriguing is the environment these prokaryotes called home. They thrived in conditions that we humans would find abhorrent. Boiling hot springs, deep-sea hydrothermal vents, and even highly acidic environments were the cradles in which these primitive life forms rocked. These hardy organisms known as extremophiles are fascinating. Extremophiles, as their name suggests, love extremes. They can survive in conditions that would be lethal to most forms of life. From the scorching heat of deep sea vents to the frigid cold of Antarctic ice, extremophiles have adapted to thrive. Why does this matter, you may ask? Well, the existence of extremophiles on Earth suggests that life is not as fragile as we once thought. It broadens our understanding of where life could potentially exist, not just on our planet, but in the universe at large. It's almost as if life itself is saying, throw at me what you will, I'll find a way to survive. And survive, it did. These early life forms paved the way for the evolution of more complex organisms, setting the stage for the great biodiversity we see today. So, as we cast our gaze into the night sky, we are reminded that life, as we know it, began in the most inhospitable of conditions. And if life could emerge and flourish here on Earth, who's to say it couldn't elsewhere in the vast cosmos? Earth's early life forms show us that life is tenacious and adaptable. The story of life's origin on Earth is a testament to the resilience of life itself, a story that continues to inspire our search for life beyond our home planet. Could there be other Earth-like planets in the universe harboring life? This question has captivated scientists and dreamers alike for generations. Today, we invite you to join us on the thrilling journey of exploring exoplanets. Exoplanets, the planets outside our own solar system, were once mere figments of science fiction. It wasn't until the late 20th century that we had the technology to detect them. Today, we know of over 4,000 exoplanets, each one a new world, a new possibility. These far-off planets orbit stars other than our sun and they come in an astounding variety of sizes and types. We have gas giants larger than Jupiter, rocky worlds similar in size to Earth, and even planets that seem to be made entirely of water. But how do we find these distant planets? Well, we use a few different methods, one of which is the transit method. When a planet passes in front of its star, it causes a tiny dip in the star's brightness. By observing these dips, we can infer the presence of a planet. Yet, the burning question remains, could any of these alien worlds be suitable for life as we know it? To answer, scientists scrutinize exoplanets for their habitability. Factors such as their distance from their star, their atmospheric composition, and whether they have liquid water are all critical. Some planets, aptly named Goldilocks planets, seem to have just the right conditions, not too hot, not too cold, but just right for life. The search for extraterrestrial life is a complex and challenging endeavor, but it is also one filled with hope. Each new discovery brings us one step closer to answering one of the most profound questions. Are we alone in the universe? The discovery of exoplanets opens up exciting possibilities in the search for alien life. As we continue to explore the cosmos, who knows what we might find? Perhaps on a distant exoplanet life is looking back at us, wondering the very same thing. What if we could estimate the number of civilizations in our galaxy? This question has intrigued scientists for decades and has led to the creation of a fascinating field of study known as astrobiology. Astrobiology seeks to understand the potential for life beyond Earth by studying the origins, evolution, and distribution of life in the universe. One of the key tools used in astrobiology to estimate the potential for extraterrestrial civilizations is the Drake Equation. Named after Frank Drake, the American astronomer who developed it in the early 1960s, the Drake Equation is not meant to give a precise number, but rather to stimulate scientific dialogue and research. The Drake Equation consists of seven factors that we must consider when estimating the number of civilizations in our galaxy. These include the rate of star formation, the fraction of those stars that have planetary systems, the number of planets that could potentially support life, the fraction of planets where life actually develops, and the fraction of life that evolves into intelligent beings. Additionally, it considers the lifespan of such advanced civilizations. Now, it's important to note that many of these factors are still largely unknown and uh, 
uh, open to wide interpretation. For instance, we are just beginning to understand the abundance and diversity of exoplanets in our galaxy. Similarly, we can only guess at the likelihood of life developing and evolving into intelligent beings on these distant worlds. The Drake equation, however, is not about arriving at a definitive answer. Instead, it serves as a roadmap guiding our ongoing exploration of the cosmos. It helps us identify the key variables we need to understand in our quest to answer one of the most profound questions humanity has ever asked. Are we alone in the universe? While the Drake equation may be speculative, it provides a fascinating framework for us to ponder the existence of alien life. It reminds us that our search for extraterrestrial intelligence is not just about finding aliens, but about understanding the vast, complex universe we inhabit. So as we continue to gaze at the stars, we're not only exploring outer space, we're also exploring the depths of our own curiosity and imagination. The Drake Equation, while speculative, provides a fascinating framework to ponder the existence of alien life. Life, as resilient as it is, still faces numerous challenges and constraints. As we delve into the hardships of life, we come to realize that the journey from non-living to living is not a simple one. The cosmos is a vast and often hostile environment filled with extreme conditions that can hinder the emergence and survival of life. From searing hot planets that can melt lead to frigidly cold worlds encased in ice, these harsh environments pose considerable obstacles to the development and sustenance of life as we know it. On the microscopic level, life's building blocks, the cells, are constantly under siege. They battle against harmful radiation, drastic temperature changes, and the scarcity of nutrients. These elements must work in harmony for life to flourish. Even on our home planet Earth, life faces an uphill battle. Consider the extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme environments from the scorching heat of volcanic vents to the bone-chilling temperatures of the Arctic. Their existence demonstrates life's tenacity, but also underscores the stringent requirements for its survival. Beyond the Earth, the challenges multiply. Space is a vacuum fraught with deadly radiation and devoid of the conditions necessary for life as we understand it. Any life form venturing into this realm must be equipped to withstand these harsh conditions. Then there's the issue of time. The universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old, but life on Earth only appeared around 4 billion years ago. This suggests a lengthy period before the conditions were right for life to emerge. The potential for life elsewhere in the universe also hinges on a delicate balance of factors. The presence of water, a stable climate, and a protective atmosphere are just a few of the essential prerequisites. In the grand scheme of things, life is an intricate dance, a delicate balance between existence and extinction. It requires the perfect blend of conditions to thrive, and even then, survival is not guaranteed. These challenges remind us of the fragility of life and the importance of favorable conditions for its emergence. As we continue to explore the cosmos, we gain a deeper appreciation for the resilience of life and the intricate web of conditions that allow it to endure against all odds. The journey to understand life's origins is far from over. We've traversed the vast cosmic timeline from the birth of the universe and the formation of elemental building blocks to the cradling of life in the early Earth's extreme conditions. We've explored the concept of the Goldilocks zone, where planets could potentially harbor life, and the discovery of exoplanets in our ongoing quest for extraterrestrial existence. We've delved into the field of astrobiology and the intriguing Drake equation as we estimate the potential for alien civilizations. We've even acknowledged the challenges and constraints that life faces in different environments. Yet despite our progress, we're only scratching the surface of this universal enigma. As we peer deeper into the cosmic abyss, our understanding of life's origins continues to evolve. With every new discovery, every novel hypothesis, we inch closer to answering one of the most profound questions of our existence. How early could life have appeared in the universe?